Hello, you just reached MRN Crew Call, presented by Hercules Tires. Your patience while holding is appreciated. Our representatives are working hard to get you closer to the guys on top of the pit boxes, over the wall, and on your radio dial. Thank you for holding. You are now being connected to your hosts, Tony Rizzuti and Kit Crew. Welcome to MRN Crew Call. We are presented by Hercules Tires. I'm Tony Rizzuti alongside is a guy that's as cool as a mason jar in a redneck country bar. Say hello to the real Kid Crew. I'm actually trembling inside right now. Yeah, why is that? I don't know. Because it's cold in here? Yes. Yeah, for those of you that are watching, it's about <laughs> negative 30 in here. We're like one of those vodka bars where you got to buy the fur coat to go in, you know, drink them right off there. It's freezing oh, in yeah. here. yeah. I think we should... Uh, you could hang Creekstone meat in here. I think we should have like a little fireplace and we should come in in like smoking jackets, Ooh. like an ascot. We can hang fireside out. Fireside A little chat. cozy fireside chat. I like that for the fall. We'll, uh, okay. we'll bank on that. All right. Uh, we'd love for you to join our conversation. You can follow us on Twitter at MRN Radio. Use the hashtag AskMRN. That's how we know the conversation's coming in. You can use our fan forum hotline, 1-844-4-MRN. That's right. You got it. Yeah. Seven I almost weeks said in, for NASCAR. I almost gave you the uh, the number for NASCAR Live. That wouldn't have been good. Seven, no, seven well, weeks it in, been you're good. finally figuring it out. Exactly. Great show today. Yep. Really excited about this show. We're going to talk to Talladega winning crew chief. The number 17 Ford driven by Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Brian Patty. That's exciting. Well, he's Big been around time. a long time. Doesn't feel like it, but, I mean, he goes way back. That was his fifth cup win. I think 21 total wins. Carl, you remember he used to, to win with Nemco all the time. Right, Joe Nemechek, like uh, Randy LaJoy even. Yeah. Yeah, he goes way back. So uh, we'll talk to him, excited about that. And Mike Massaro, uh, a cool. good friend of ours, started with MRN. He moved to NBC, then to ESPN, then back to NBC. Uh, got caught in some of the layoff stuff, so we'll find out from Mike what he's been up to and get his thoughts on the season. Now he's kind of independent, so be curious to see what he thinks about some of this stuff. Yeah, I'm excited to have him on. Cool yeah. guy. I think we occasionally rub elbows at the track, sure. but I don't know if I've ever really got a chance to, hung out, to hang out and, and speak with him. So it's going to be fun. Should Catch be fun. Then Mike we'll Masara. play some five-on-five five off. Then I'll beat his butt at five-on-five uh, five off. Today's category, fellas, uh, You're My Idol. Oh, You're My I know Idol. Where this is, I know what uh, this is about. Hey, it's time to check in with this week's crew call, and many of the artists that we spotlight, kid, the hardcore country fans know but they're usually young and up and coming, starting to get hot. They're kind of the new person. But this week, my friend, we spared no expense. Big time. We're, we're talking Big to time. a band that's playing Friday night in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I went in to look at tickets. Nosebleeds, baby. That's all that's left. And there's only a couple. They, I mean, they're amazing, kid. Tell us about your conversation with country music legends, Rascal, Rascal Flats. Flats. They have a new CD coming out, and that is not, that is not it. That is not it. i got to get you a copy. <laughs> Do you realize they just sold their 10 millionth ticket? They're legends. 10 million tickets. So they have a new CD coming out called Back to Us. Uh, the album will come out next week. I believe a week from Friday it'll be in stores. Uh, have you seen the video? Yours, if you want it, is the new single, Tony. Mm -hmm. And it's cool to see people doing, like, fun funny videos you yeah. don't see them you know those parody a, a videos yeah. yeah but uh the thing that struck me that i thought was really cool is it stars kevin farley brother of the late great chris farley and it's uh, it blew me away how much he was he's always resembled his oh, brother yeah. but it's like creepy uh in this video how much he looks like his brother chris farley and on this week's crew cut we talked to the guys uh, from rascal flats about that music video oh i know it it really is and then like when he walks out and said I'm a hard worker. Uh, when he when he I says write, that line, I write songs on the side. Mm -hmm. Just yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's Chris, you know. It was kind of creepy though. They're, they're getting busy with, with Kevin and, and Christy Swanson getting busy on the bed while you guys are on the TV. That's kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we, you know, we, we had bring, a good seat. Bring out the best in people, you know. Well, no offense. <laughs> you know, but when I'm playing music to get me in that kind of a mood, I generally don't think of Rascal Flats. But <laughs> you know what? I don't either. That's funny. Our wives don't either. <laughs> <laughs> when we're getting ready to the, well played. make it a little whoopee, what we do is turn on NASCAR USA, buddy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. Wow. <laughs> How about that? Who doesn't? <laughs> I thought I was the only one who did that. So Rascal Flats, they're listening to me on the show? I don't 
That's weird. You inspire people, man. Um, Lady Killer. Uh, Google yours if you wanted, if you want to see the music video. It's actually kind of funny, and I never really thought we would be discussing voyeurism and making whoopee here on the show. But if you want to hear more of Rascal Flats, uh, NASCAR USA this Sunday, just go to MRN.com, click on the stations tab, and you can find a station near you, and we'll have more with the guys uh, talking about their music they put on touring. A, they put on a great live show as well. Fantastic. Lots of energy, Fantastic. great songs to sing along with. My kid likes them from Cars. They right. had Life, Life is a, a highway. highway. They redid that song. That was a lot of fun. So uh, be sure to check out Rascal Flats. Grab their new uh, CD, digital media, probably off in vinyl. People are doing vinyl again. Probably, yeah. probably I mean, release it in vinyl, too. Of that or not, but That'd be maybe. kind of fun. See if you can get us one. All right. Then I have something bigger to hold up. I'll call him. I'll get Joe Don on the phone and uh, get us hooked up. <laughs> get some tickets to that Tulsa show, too. Okay. We want to be down low, though. All right, let's take our first break here on MRI and Crew Call. When we come back, we'll talk to Brian Patty, the latest winning crew chief, in the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series, he's next here on Crew Call. Citywide to countryside, whatever you drive, wherever you go. Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there, no matter where the road takes you. To learn more, visit HerculesTire.com. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Hey, race fans, visit Camping World in Concord for convenient one-stop shopping on outdoor accessories, top brand RVs, and quality service. Buy an RV and enroll in the Good Sam Elite Loyalty Program, offering incentives valued at over $2,000. Browse over 10,000 Camping World products and accessories in America's largest RV dealer network. Plus, shop the top manufacturers such as Coleman, Keystone, Newmar, Thor Motor Coach, Winnebago, and many more. America's number one RV dealer has something for everyone. Visit Camping World in Concord today. See dealer for full offer details and disclaimers. Live sports are the one true reality entertainment where a single dramatic moment can become timeless. In NASCAR, Motor Racing Network's live broadcasts elevate your senses to the sights, sounds, and struggles taking place on the racetrack. Keselowski to the bottom of the racetrack. He tries to slide up. Newman is there. Sideways is Keselowski. The power of radio to the imagination of the listener. Tune in to the Motor Racing Network. Visit MRN.com for an affiliate list in your local area. I'm sorry, Mr. France isn't available right now. Let me connect you to Tony Rizzuti and Kit Cruz. Welcome back to MRE and Crew Call. Tony Rizzuti, Kid Cruz. We've been talking, talking, I can't talk. Uh, we've been talking about country music, and we want to remind you that the second annual Country 500 Music Festival is coming to Daytona International Speedway, May 26th through the 28th. The World Center of Racing becomes the World Center of Entertainment Memorial Day weekend with performances by Blake Shelton, Kid Rock, Miranda Lambert, Keith Urban, Brooks and Dunn, and many, many more. For information and to buy your one or three day ticket passes, visit country500.com. And now let's waste no time and get to our guest line, bring in our first crew call. He is the crew chief for the number 17 Ford of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. They were winners at Talladega. It is Brian Patty. Brian, how are you today? I'm doing pretty good. How are you guys? Hey, real good. Hey, congrats again on the win at Talladega. When did you guys stop celebrating? Uh, it hasn't stopped. It's been a long, <laughs> it's been a long week. Uh, I can't wait to get to Kansas. I hear you. Hey, man, it's been quite a turnaround over at Roush Fenway Racing so far in 2017. What do you think has been the biggest area of improvement that the team has found so far this season? Man, it's it's hard to say. Um, just everyone working together, um, everyone being open-minded, uh, um, you know, the key leaders within our organization, um, just, just wanting to, you know, pull in the same direction and, and, and do what it takes to, to run better. So, um, you know, we made some changes, uh, toward the end of last year. And, and when we, you know, contracted a little bit, uh, losing the team, um, you know, we just took the best of, of what we had and, and moved them around the chess pieces around. And right now it's, uh, Seems like uh, it was a proper move. Uh, over to me. Okay, Tony, I was waiting for you to jump in <laughs> with another question there. And I was so uh, tuned in into Brian, just listening to you uh, speak, man. Congratulations uh, on the win. I know Tony touched on it earlier. You said it's been a long week. So, like, what exactly did you guys do? Like, how crazy was it over there? This is a big, big deal for Roush Fenway Racing to get back in, uh, in victory lane. Was Jack handing out Ford Mustangs? I mean, did you guys just have some beards? You go get a big tried, steak? What'd you get? I, I tried to get a GT, but uh, that wasn't, that was a no-go. Nice, uh, good choice. Um, no, it, yeah, obviously since, 
since the checkered flag, you know, you've got all the post-race um, obligations and got home late, uh, you know, flew home with Ricky and, and Danica and, and Kyle Lars. And it was just, uh, it was neat to hear how excited they were for Ricky, um, which was cool. And, uh, you know, came in Monday and the shop's obviously buzzing. Um, can't go anywhere without, you know, without getting congratulated and every, just everyone had a smile on their face. It was just, um, this place needed it. Um, you know, it's been a long time for, for myself and also the, for the organization, but, uh, it just more for Jack, you know, he just, uh, was kind of giddy. Um, you know, we had, uh, shoot, I can't remember. We've, we've had so many lunches and breakfasts. <laughs> there's, there's plenty to eat, uh, around our shop the last two or three days. Um, you know, we got our partners bringing in lunch today. Today, Fast and All is uh, sponsoring our lunch, and then yesterday it was uh, Fifth Third uh, Bank. Um, so, and it's just uh, it's crazy. And, and and the way Jack has has walked around the shop here, it's uh, it would have been really neat to see him. You know, 10, 15 years ago when when things were rolling really well here, to see how uh, how happy and funny was to be around. Talking with Brian Patty, he's the crew chief for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Roush Fenway racing that number 17 Ford, victorious at Talladega. All right, Brian, now we've had a lot of recent success. You've had four top tens in the last five races. You've had the win. I feel like now from a media standpoint, we're looking at this team differently. There's a lot of expectations now for you guys to run good every week. Do you feel those expectations, and how do you think your team will deal with that extra pressure? Uh, I rather you guys not expect anything. Um, <laughs> I kind of like the first the first ten races has been uh, under the radar. Uh, just trying to focus on execution and 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 tidying up some some details as far as you know our whole program at the shop and at the track. And um, yeah, it's obviously it's better than it was last year. It's still not where it needs to be. Um, you know you're um, you know obviously we only have one win. Um, you know it seems like Penske and and both Ganassi both have more speed than us, you know, on a weekly basis. So we have to, we have to work hard and get our cars better, and and uh, hopefully we can, you know, contend with those guys. But, uh, yeah, I, my expectations moving forward, uh, more wins. I think, uh, you know, this trophy thing is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it pays well. Uh, attitudes are great. Um, it's just one big party, and everybody's so happy. So we we, do, we need to work hard and, uh, you know, get a, get a trophy at a real racetrack because, as Kyle Busch would say. <laughs> well, and you've taken a little bit of the pressure off towards the playoffs. Certainly, we don't know how many winners there can be, so there's no guarantee that one gets you in, but certainly sitting in a good position. You talked about you're excited to get to Kansas. We're going to have a little bit different tire when we go there, a tire that we've never run before. I know they were trying to get in a tire test yesterday. I don't know if they got the full one in, but what can we expect this weekend at Kansas? Uh, from what I've read, Seems like uh, you know you'll obviously with the aero package and the tire you'll be a little bit off of speed compared to last year, um, which is good. You know slower seems to provide better racing. Um, you know the faster we go, it seems like it's more aero dependent, and uh, you know we don't want that. Um, yeah, still a dual zone right side tire, so you know do what you can with uh, the information you're given and and kinematically you know get the car where you need it, but. Uh, I don't, I don't know that you'll see a lot. I think the track uh, hopefully is aged. Obviously, six more months will help it, you know, widen the groove out, which last year it seemed like it got a little wider mm -hmm. um, than previous years, and that, that's, that's every track, right? You get a repave, and it takes a few years to get rolling. And, uh, the wider the tracks are, the better the racing. So I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, uh, my boy Ricky says he, he likes Kansas. I really don't remember Kansas last year. <laughs> I know that's terrible, but uh, uh, he said he loved it. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Hey, Brian, before we let you go, you're a, a Zephyr Hills, Florida guy. You grew up with David Rudiman. Uh, you guys never really got to work together at the top level. Do you, do you ever wish you could go back and maybe at least have one season at NASCAR's top level with your buddy Rudiman? Yeah, you know, even, even um, you know, nationwide uh, or Bush, Bush series back then, it would have been nice to do a full season. But, uh, yeah, never – we only ran what uh, maybe a few races there when he was just getting started mm -hmm. uh, with Jody Machex, um, and that was a lot of fun. He just, yeah, it, it would be similar to what Ricky and I have as far as you know, both dirt racers, uh, both from the south, uh, have a lot of common beliefs. Um, yeah, I, I would say yeah, it's would, it's kind of a bittersweet question, but uh, yeah, it would have been nice to, to at least give one year and see what the two of us could do.
Yeah, it would have been fun. You know, both Kid and I are from Florida, so most people think of Zephyr Hills, they think I of love water. That water. Man, yeah. I think of Brian Patty, I think of David Rudiman. Well, I, of course, I think of Buzzy Rudiman first, everybody, right, I think, right. because he's a legend. But uh, that would have been good stuff. But it's great you guys remain friends. Glad to see you having success here at the top level in the sport. Continued success. We'll, we'll lessen the expectations a little bit for you until you get that second win, then it's on. But uh, I know you're really busy. Appreciate the time today calling in here to Crew Call. No, thanks, thanks guys. There he is, cool. Brian thanks, Patty, Brian. Ralph awesome. Spinway. I'll tell you what, uh, we've said this about Kyle Larson kind of at Richmond. Once you start to show that success, it's hard not to expect it. You get up, it, it tells you what the guys like Jimmy Johnson and Chad Canales, what they have to deal with every week. And it's interesting to see how a team handles once you get the success, then you get a little dip. Does everybody get discouraged, or do they continue to pull themselves up and know they can do it? It'll be fun to watch with this. Oh, it's going to be fun to watch. I think he came in 19th last year at Kansas, Mm -hmm. but, um, you know, anything less than a top 10, it's going to be like, what happened to Ricky? Hey, look, it's a new year, low down for us. Ricky's an open-wheel sprint car guy. Should be a lot of fun. All right, let's take a uh, timeout. When we come back, we'll talk to our good buddy Mike Massaro, find out what he's been doing lately when we return to MRN Crew Call. Log on to CreekstoneFarms.com right now for free Black Angus beef sirloins from Creekstone Farms. Use the promo code MRNSIRLOIN at CreekstoneFarms.com and score free premium Black Angus beef sirloins with any purchase of $100 or more. Creekstone Farms' juicy Master Chef Choice top sirloins are always a winner. Use promo code MRNSIRLOIN at CreekstoneFarms.com for your MRN offer of free sirloins. Good while supplies last. Hi, everybody. This is Mike Bagley. Join me every Tuesday night for NASCAR Live. This one-hour interactive show takes you beyond the typical storylines in NASCAR with the stars of the sport. The celebration's been fun. I mean, afterwards, I guess I didn't leave track until my 1.30, so I caught it with my crew in South Beach. NASCAR Live also gives you in-depth analysis with MRN's top personality. Because for me, the, the decisive moment of this championship was when... Check it out. NASCAR Live this Tuesday night at 7 Eastern on the Motor Racing Network. Motor Racing Network has always been your source for motorsports coverage when you couldn't be at the track. Now, never miss another minute of our breathtaking coverage with the MRN app, available on your iPhone or Android device. This free app delivers all the latest news, locates nearby MRN stations, streams your favorite programs, and is your home for live cup practice and qualifying action. Search MRN in the App Store or on Google Play. It's the Motor Racing Network at your fingertips, and it's available for free right now. Thank you for joining MRN Crew Call. If you know your party's extension, please send it along. I haven't been to a good one in years. Now here's Tony and Kid. Thank you, Susie. Tony Rizzuti, Kid Cruz here on MRN Crew Call. Let's go to the guest line and bring in former MRN, ESPN, and NASCAR on NBC reporter Mike Massaro. Mike, so good to talk to you. How you doing, bud? I'm doing great. Man, that's a long list of formers, by the way, you put about <laughs> my name. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we need to get something new there. And, and I know I speak for all of the fans when we say we really miss seeing you on TV. What have you been up to lately? What, what's been keeping your uh, uh, time occupied? Well, I, I'm semi-retired, sort of. Uh, <laughs> we need know, to work I, on I'm that. Actually, I've been enjoying time with my family uh, for the most part. Uh, you know, spending time watching my kids play baseball. My oldest son is a high school baseball player, uh, and my youngest son is in junior high, and I'm coaching his team. Oh, so nice! I, I've been pretty busy with that. And yeah, I, I you know, I don't mean to brag, but we're undefeated, by the way. Just clearly superior coaching, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but having a ton of fun doing that. Hey, uh, this year we saw so many significant rule changes. Uh, we've got the lower down four stage racing, Dale Jr.'s big announcement. I want to get your feelings on a few of these because we haven't heard from you in a while. Low down force racing, do you like what you're seeing so far? Uh, I, I've seen some improvement, but uh, I think that there's a lot of folks out there who probably agree with me that uh, there's still a lot of room for growth in that regard uh, in, in terms of you know being able to pass a little bit more. I don't think there's ever enough passing, mm-hmm. so maybe, maybe I'm just uh, – asking for too much and, and uh, you know I want to see action all the time but I think a lot of people do so I still think there's some potential there and uh, some room for growth but but it's been you know a, a move in the right direction for sure how about the stage racing have you found this to be a good idea you know what again just like the lower down force thing Tony uh, I think there's potential for it but I don't think it has achieved what uh, the people who had come up with the concept had had thought it would and and I think for to a large degree I mean you're gonna see you know, some drama at the end of each stage at a place like Talladega mm-hmm. or a place like 
Daytona or, or maybe a short track like Martinsville or Bristol, a place where second, the second-place car is close to the first-place car, a, a place where it's realistic to think that driver, with all the incentive on the line, can do something to try to make something happen at the end of a stage. Unfortunately, that's not the case at every racetrack we go to. If you go to a mile-and-a-half racetrack, a lot of times that second-place car is you know, 12 car lengths back. And no matter how much incentive is there for that driver to get by the leader, they just can't make it happen. So, um, unfortunately, they haven't been able to kind of, you know, kind of rein that in, so to speak. But, mm-hmm. but I, I've seen it at Martinsville. I've seen it at Bristol, a little bit at Richmond, uh, the restricted play tracks as well. So, so it is working at some places. Hey, Mike, what are your thoughts on the uh, retirement of Dale Earnhardt Jr.? I guess he's going to do a TV show now. Uh, were you uh, were you surprised that he actually came back this year? Do you think? Wait, it's, wait, it's... What's this news you speak of? He, he's retiring. I, I hadn't heard. That. <laughs> yeah, it, we're breaking that news right here. <laughs> uh, you know what? I, I got to say, and I think a lot of people probably had the same reaction. Not terribly surprised, uh, considering what he went through last year. Um, you know, sad a little bit because it's the end of an era, and uh, you know, there's a reason he's the most popular driver in the series. Uh, you know, a lot of people are going to miss him, uh, not just fans, but people who work in the garage. We're going to miss him. He's, he's the genuine article. He's, he's a great guy to, to be around. He, he's an amazing ambassador for the sport. And uh, as a driver, people are going to miss him. I don't think he's going to disappear. <laughs> I know that. No. I, in fact, I know he's not going to uh, with his involvement with junior motorsports, for one thing. And uh, television, yes, we, we, we've heard about the, the DIY channel television show he's yep. working on with Amy, mm-hmm. uh, that's just one thing. I'm sure we're going to see more of him in television, uh, you know, in the broadcast booth, uh, you know, on one of the networks for sure. I don't know which one, but it would be my guess that uh, there's been a lot of conversation already between him uh, and Fox and him and NBC and uh, trying to figure out what's the best place for him. So I would be shocked if he's not with one of those networks next year. Mike, you mentioned your two boys uh, earlier, Nicholas and Anthony. They're, they're great baseball players, but they're also race fans. NASCAR certainly wants to try to get those people, like your two sons, to come to races, to watch more. Uh, you and I are similar that, you know, our dad's got us into racing, and that's how we got into it. Have you seen your sons have the same attraction to watching NASCAR and wanting to go to a race as you did back in your generation? Is NASCAR succeeding in getting that younger viewer? Tony, as much as I would love to say yes, uh, the answer is no. Uh, they, they haven't had the same attraction to the sport that you and I had when we were that age. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what it is exactly. Uh, I, I, maybe the length of the races, uh, it, and it just doesn't fit into their attention span. Right. Um, and I don't want to generalize a whole generation, but you know, my kids are constantly on their phones, and they're you know they're they're doing Snapchat and. Instagram and things of that nature, and that's really where they spend their time, you know. And I don't think it's just NASCAR. There, there are very few sports that my sons will sit in front of the TV and watch, you know, the entire game. And, and they're huge sports fans. I mean, they are, you know, huge sports fans. Um, you know, I, I think the NBA has captured my youngest son's imagination for whatever reason, and he'll watch an NBA game start to finish. Uh, you know, a little bit of NFL, uh, but NBA is first and foremost in his mind. Uh, my oldest son. Uh, you know, it's kind of a spattering. And again, I, you know, I think maybe the NFL is the only thing that will hold his attention, and that's only if his team's playing, and that would be the New England Patriots, <laughs> of course. But you know, these the, the kids these days they have so much going on, and you know, it's it's kind of like short attention span theater. Things need to be condensed. Things need to be action packed. And um, you know, for whatever reason, I don't know if NASCAR is capitalizing on that yet. Uh, one thing that my oldest son mentioned to me, and, I, and it made me think a little bit. He said, Dad, you know, one thing that, that's different about NASCAR uh, in comparison to the other sports is that when I watch a show like ESPN Sports Center, and they've got top ten plays of the day, mm-hmm. he told me that, look, NASCAR doesn't have anything represented in those top ten plays. And, Dad, I love that segment. And I, you know, I said to Nicholas, I said, well, what about, you know, you see a big crash. That sometimes, you know, plays into the top ten. He goes, well, that's not a top ten play. That's when something goes wrong. Yeah. You know, and he made a great point because when you watch the top ten, it's, you know, it's a great catch or a great basketball shot or amazing play in the field. You know, a crash is when something goes terribly wrong. Now, it's visually spectacular, but sure. we can't, we haven't found a way to really show a great play by a driver, something he's doing inside the car that is amazing and just, you know, blows our mind. 
um, something that really just stands out and just, just grabs our attention and says, wow, I wish I could do that, the kind of thing. Uh, and, I, and I think with this generation, that's kind of what they're looking for, you know, something, you know, quick examples of, of action and expertise. And, uh, you know, as good as I think the television coverage is, and it's amazing, we haven't been able to capture that yet. Yeah, and hopefully we'll, we'll all come up with some type of uh, thing that will bring them back. You know, I, I like to look at the cars, too. I mean, when we were kids, man, cars were everything. Well, I'm, um, I'm a little different when it comes to looking at the cars. I grew up around modified. Yeah. You know, so, so I'm partial to modified. They don't have front fenders. The way they look as race cars right. compared to the cup cars. So I'm, I'm still, you know, it was funny. I went to Stafford Speedway uh, last weekend for the Spring Sizzler, and I was like a kid again. I, you know, we talk about what it was like when we were our kids' age. Mm-hmm. I was like a kid again around all those modifieds and, you know, the big tires and no fenders and just just, just horsepower and ground-pounding action. It was great to be back at Stafford and see the modifieds. Did you see our buddy Kyle Ricky? I'm sorry? Did you see our buddy Kyle Ricky? I did see Kyle Ricky there. Of course you there. did. I saw quite a few people. I saw Kyle Ricky there. I saw Tommy Baldwin was mm. there. Now, now, get this. Tommy Baldwin, of course, he came for the modifieds. His father was a modified driver. You know, he, he was brought up around the series. Of course, Tommy is still very much involved at the top levels of the sport. Well, he was at Stafford as a car owner of a modified. But in addition to that, he was changing tires on pit stops. Nice. So <laughs> I, I can't think of too many car owners at, at the highest level of the sport who are changing tires during pit stops at a lower level on the weekends. And, yeah. and Tommy was. Good stuff. And, and you can hear our Kyle Ricky along with Buddy Long uh, later this afternoon on NASCAR Coast to Coast. Good stuff about the K&N modified uh, series. Uh, be sure to tune into that at 4 p.m. Eastern today. All right, we got to take a time out. Mike, we're going to play a little trivia game called Five on Five Off. You ready to play? I am. All right, we're going to put yeah. you on hold. When we come back, Kid Cruz will see how he does, and then we'll see if Mike Massara can take down the champ here on Crew Call. Today, Toyota's featured NASCAR fan is Dr. Tom Pierce. So, Dr. Tom, what's your claim to fame? Well, due to all of Toyota's NASCAR wins last year, I wrote thousands of doctor's notes for fans for overexcitement hypertension, a condition that requires a day off work to rest. Sounds like a responsible doctor. Doctor? <laughs> I'm not a real doctor, bro. Would a doctor get a guy off work for overexcitement about the new Camry? Because I did. Let's go NASCAR fans! Toyota, let's go places. To learn more, visit toyotaracing.com. NASCAR is a registered trademark of the National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing, Inc. Scratch your NASCAR itch during the week with NASCAR Today. Fortunate to be driving really fast race cars right now. We want to keep that chemistry going inside the shop like we've had and keep things positive and having fun. I'm Woody Kane. NASCAR Today goes beyond the track for a sound that's a little different. I, I sure would like to not wreck. I hate repaves, but it's a part of our schedule. It's a part of our sport. This is NASCAR driver Brad Keselowski. Listen to NASCAR Today every weekday. MRN.com, your online destination for all things NASCAR. Looking for the latest NASCAR news? MRN.com. NASCAR stats for fantasy racing? MRN.com. Opinion pieces from award-winning motorsports writers? MRN.com. Race schedule series standings and photos? MRN.com. Live race streaming and audio and video podcasts that you can't miss? MRN.com. Stay up to date with all things NASCAR. MRN.com. Time now for Motor Racing Network's number one game show. The game where MRN talent prove their mettle against the unshakable Kid Cruz to see if they've truly earned the right to sit atop the pit box or if they're simply a tool. It's five on, five off on MRN Crew Call. Getting ready to play a little five on, five up, but before we do, we want to talk to you about our friends at Creekstone Farms. If you head over to creekstonefarms.com, uh, for your chance at free Black Angus beef sirloins from Creekstone, use promo code MRN Sirloin and score free premium Black Angus beef sirloins with any purchase of $100 or more. That's M R N S I R L O I N at CreekstoneFarms.com for your free sirloins. I know a lot of people have taken advantage of that. Uh, man, delicious. Might might be something I throw on the grill tonight. If it's a nice night, it's a nice well, night here well, in Charlotte. All right, we got to play the Jay. game. Yeah, we're running a little bit late. Uh, Today's category, kid, you're my idol. American Idol has been picked up. It's going to move from Fox to ABC. So let's see what you know about this show. 45 seconds on the clock, Robbie Mays. Oh, all right. We're moving along. We got to go. All right, we got to go. Your time starts now. American Idol debuted in what year? Uh, 2001. How many people watched the very first show? Mm, 8 million. 
Kelly Clarkson won the first title. Where did she rank in VH1's greatest all-time women in music? Ooh, she's going to be a judge on the new show, I think, too. Um, I don't know. Third. Jordan Sparks was the youngest winner. How old was she when she won? Uh, she was 17. Carrie Underwood has won how many Grammy Awards? She oh, was a winner. goodness. Um, Grammys. Four? Four. Okay. Time is up. Very nice job. I've got to look at these. These are pretty close. Let's bring back in Mike Massaro. Mike, you there? I'm here, ready to go. Our category. To these questions. Yeah, our category that. today is "You're My Idol." Uh, with American Idol coming back uh, now to ABC, these will all have to do with American Idol. So, not sure if you uh. watched the show, but <laughs> here we go. Forty. Can I, can I tap out now? Yeah, you can call a friend. Uh, Forty-five seconds on the clock, Mike, and your time starts now. American Idol debuted in what year? Uh, nineteen. No, let's go two thousand three. How many people watched the first show? How many people? Let's let's go with sixty-five. No, I can't go that high. I'm gonna go thirty million. Thirty million. Kelly Clarkson won the very first title. Where did she rank in VH1's greatest all-time women in music? <laughs> all time. All time. I don't know. Three hundred. Three hundred. Uh, Jordan Sparks was the youngest winner. How old was she when she won? Oh, let's go with twenty-two. And Carrie Underwood, she won American Idol. How many Grammy Awards has she won? Oh, gosh. Let's go with seven. There we go. Poor Mike. I think I kicked his butt. Really I bad. don't. I think, to be honest here, kid, I think we're going to end up having to go to a tiebreaker here. Really? I really oh, do. Okay. All right, let's bring in producer Daryl Smith. Yo, yo, yo. Uh, Daryl, so the soon. very first question, American Idol debuted in what year? Kid said. 2001. And Mike said? 2003. The correct answer? 2002. We have a tie oh, on question whoa. number one, which is why I think we may be going to the tiebreaker. All right, let's see how we do. Question two, how many people watched the very first show? Kid said? 8 million. Mike said? 30 million. Wow. Uh, the correct answer? 9.9 million. 9.9. .9. Kid Cruz gets the point <laughs> oh, there. Yeah. Uh, Mike, you would have been close. I think their highest ever was like 40 million. So, uh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's what you were thinking, right? The <laughs> highest one. Uh, Kelly Clarkson won the very first uh, American Idol. VH1 did a greatest all-time women in music. Kelly ranked. Kid said. Third. I was horrible. And Mike said. 300. The correct answer. Uh, 19th. 19th. Wow. I was actually surprised. I mean, think of all the great women from bands and everything. 19th, yeah, I said Kelly three. Clarkson. I was like, that was stupid. But 19, all right, that's about right. All right, kid gets the point there. All right. uh, Jordan Sparks. I, I like my ranking better. <laughs> I did. It was probably more accurate with most fans. Uh, Jordan Sparks, youngest winner. How old was she, kid said? 17. And Mike said? 22. The correct answer was? 18. 18. So we won't have to go to a tie. Kid's going to get the win. But my man Mike Massaro is going to come back right here because we asked how many Grammys did Carrie Underwood win, and Kid said four. Mike said seven. And the correct on the dot number was seven. Seven. Wow. So Mike gets on the board. Three to two. The win goes to Kid. Don't feel bad, Mike. He's won nine of these things and only lost two. I'm just glad I got on the board. <laughs> Backstreet is back. Hey, the, nobody's going to know these questions. If they did, we'd be a little concerned. And actually, to be honest, Kid, I'm starting to get concerned. Just a little bit. I have no life. None. Zero. Zip. Nada. Other than talking to these country stars. Uh, but, Mike, it was a lot of fun. We really appreciate you being on the show. Uh, you know, I got a, this idea. Maybe maybe we should put together a podcast for you over here at MRN. Would that be something you might be interested you know, in? That, that, that would be interesting. I would certainly entertain that. That'd be fun. All right. I know the fans would love to hear from you. You're part of the family here. Let me, let me talk to some people and see if we can make that happen. In the meantime, enjoy the family. Uh, stay undefeated in baseball. Tell everybody I said hello, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. Certainly will. Hey, guys, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. There he is, thanks, Mike Massaro, Mike. former awesome. MRN, ESPN. NBC. He's been NBC twice. Yeah. Good guy, right, right, man. Right. Good really dude. good guy. Good and probably one of the most respected people, especially on Pitt Road. Not a guy you're going to get sensational news from. You know when he tells you it's trusted. So somebody got to pick him up. Maybe he we can a find gig. a spot if, for him here. Yeah, if not, MRN will scoop him up. I mean, they gave us a spot. I wonder if I'm going to lose my seat on this show. It's going to be you and Mike Massaro. What the Ooh. hell was that? <laughs> <laughs> that was my pin or that was something we said. Hey, as always, uh, thanks to our guests that came on, Braddy, Brian Patty. Not Braddy Patty. That would be somebody different. Brian Patty, Mike Massaro. He's Kid Cruz. I'm Tony Rizzuti. Go see Rascal Flats if you're in Tulsa on Friday. Sit up high. Be a lot of fun. And we'll see you next time on MRN Crew Call.
You've been listening to MRN Crew Call, presented by Hercules Tires. Stream us every Wednesday at noon on MRN.com or on the MRN app. MRN Crew Call is also available on demand in the MRN.com Media Center, on our Facebook page, on YouTube, or download it through iTunes or Google Play. MRN Crew Call is a production of the Motor Racing Network. Goodbye.